Okay, I'm going to show you how to make a cabled pumpkin and I'll be, you'll need a stitch marker. We're going to be doing a four stitch right cable cross and of course you'll need a 36 peg loom. Um, if you use the larger gauge 36 peg loom, the only thing that will be different is your pumpkin will be larger than one I'm using on a 3 8 inch gauge. So to get started, we want to do a drawstring cast on and where you're just going to weave in and out all the way around. Now you can do this stitch method on um, a 24 I guess if you're wanting to do you just need a six stitch um, incremented loom to be able to do this. So you can do this on anything that calculates up to six stitches. So I think 24 will do it. Um, so 24, 36, um, I think 48 will do it. Anything that ends up being like that, um, you, sh you should be able to use it to, to do this. Okay, I'm using a 36 and I will be doing pearl and e-wrap. When I do cables, I prefer to do e-wrap when I do cabling, okay? And um, it just, it gives you more space to actually cable when you do that. And you'll see that I've kind of got the stitch marking off already. And I'll explain how I've done that. So we're going to be doing a drawstring cast on circularly. And um, then I'll explain how we want to go in and do this, okay? So this is going to be a five row repeat is what this is going to be after you get cast on. Okay, so you're going to do four rows the same and then you're going to do a cable row. All right. And because it's a right cable cross rather than a left going towards the direction that I'm going, which is left handed. Um, if you're wanting to do this right handed, you have to reverse everything that I'm doing and it ends up being instead of a right-handed cable cross it ends up being a left-handed cable cross if you do the system the same way I do it you're just doing it this direction okay so what I'm going to do is the first two are going to be pearls and then you have a stitch marker and a stitch marker these will signify your cabling stitches okay and you're going to do that all the way around so two pearls and then your cabling stitches, two pearls and then your cabling stitches all the way around and this can give you a general guide, okay. I'm going to do five row, my four rows first and then I'll do my cable. So I'm going to do purl two, then e wrap four. So here's one. Two, three, four, and then purl two. So purl two and e wrap four is your repeat all the way around, and then you're going to do that for four rows. So purl two, e wrap four all the way around and then you're going to do that for four total rows and then your fifth row will be a cable okay all right let's go ahead and pause the video and finish the row and then do four more rows purl two e wrap four okay this is prepping for us to get ready to do a cable row okay okay so i'm ready to show you how to do a right four stitch cable cross and that is going to be your fifth row in a set okay and I kind of went ahead and did this so that you can see what it looks like and doing the right cable cross is actually a lot easier than if you're doing a left cable cross but you're going to do the same process if you are going to do this right handed okay so um you've been purling two and then e-wrapping four what you're going to do now is you're going to purl two, and 
and then you're going to start your cable which here are your next four stitches you are going to skip stitches one and two you're going to e-wrap pegs three and four toss the loops over then what you're going to take is your stitch holder and you're going to place stitch four going from the bottom up pulling off and stitch three next going through the bottom and taking it off pull it through place it to the middle of the loom make sure that the working yarn doesn't go behind but in front of the stitch marker then you're going to go in and you're just going to wrap pegs one and two toss the bottom loops over then you're going to place stitch two on peg four stitch one on peg three then you're going to place stitch three which you put on last onto peg one and stitch four on to peg two make sure it's not twisted okay now to make sure that it looks uniform and clean like you see here no stretching involved what you want to do is you want to take and you want to pull on that first stitch and pull on the second pull on the third and the fourth then you go and start the pattern over again and that is how you do a four stitch right cable cross now if you're doing this the other way you're going to skip your first two stitches and do the same process you're just going to do it in the reverse so I'm going to show you again purl two then you're going to skip pegs one and two and e-wrap pegs three and four toss the loops over then you're going to take your stitch holder and you're going to place stitch four going from the bottom up and then stitch three going from the bottom up take off the loom put to the middle and bring the working yarn in front wrap pegs one into then you're going to toss the bottom loop over pegs one and two then you're going to take stitch two place on peg four stitch one place on peg three okay then you're going to take stitch three on your stitch marker and place on peg one and then place stitch four on peg two snug up start with peg one pull peg two pull three pull four pull snug up and then start the pattern over again by going in and snugging that up you don't have any stress being done on the cable okay but if you have to do it in the reverse it makes it a lot more difficult and there is stress and you have to do a prep row and that kind of thing and it can just be a pain that is how you keep that nice uniform look where you don't see a change and it looks more needle knit rather than loom knit there's no stress on those stitches you don't see it okay so you're going to do this all the way around okay and that'll be your fifth row and then you're going to repeat this five row repeat where you do knit two e-wrap four for four rows and then you're going to purl two right cable cross four stitches and for your fifth row okay and you're going to repeat these over and over again until you have approximately six to seven inches okay and I can tell you right now, if you're using this gauge, 
um, it's going to be basically a cable and a half is an inch. Okay. Now, when you get done with that, I'll show you how to do the fine gauge drawstring bind off so you have a really smooth because the what you're going to bind off is going to be your bottom. You'll need a package of rice, and I would suggest going for cheap set of knee highs. You're going to be cutting it up. So it's going to hold the rice and actually go in. We're going to scent the rice so that when it actually, um, you're going to create a scented pumpkin. Okay. And we'll do a pattern for Christmas that is the same with a snowman. Okay. And I'll tell you what scents and how many drops and that kind of thing. But for now, go in and get your cabling done and however many inches, which would be about six to seven. Okay, and when you get that done, we'll come back, do a drawstring bind off, and then we'll go from there. Okay, you got your seven inches, and um, what you're going to do, I'm going to simplify this drawstring bind off. What you're going to do is you're going to take off your purl stitches first, and then you can go up and take off your e wrap stitches, okay? So you're just going to go around bottom loop over and pull your tail through. Then you're going to skip four. Toss bottom loop over. Pull your tail through. And you're going to take the purl stitches off first all the way around. Just go ahead and pause the video and get that done. And then we'll move to the next section. Now that you've taken out your purl stitches, as you can see here, you're ready to go in and start taking off all of your other stitches. So what we're going to do is we're going to skip that and we're going to move over to the next batch of stitches. And then at this point, you're just going to go in and take off the rest of the stitches. So go ahead and pause the video and get the rest of your stitches taken off and then we will go from there. Okay, you want to be able to draw string this together. You're going to go and find where your tail finished. And you're going to see this long section here. You're going to pull that long section first, which pulls those purl stitches in first. Then what you're going to do is pull your tail. Okay. For some reason, acting like it's got a knot. All right, I don't know why it's doing that. We're just going to pull it and then finish it. I don't know why it's acting like a knot in it, but anyway, once you do that, and if it does like mine did, you can just knot it and put it up into the middle of the pumpkin okay and that way if you run into this which you shouldn't have um, but for some reason i did of course some video and that's probably the reason why but you just knot it and then you can send it up through the middle all right and you closed off the bottom section now you'll need to get a sandwich bag and you're going to pour some rice into it and I'm going to tell you how many drops of, say, cinnamon and nutmeg and um, that kind of other essential oils. Or you can find synthetic pumpkin spice. I like using real oils because there's a lot less allergens with them. Okay, so you'll need a sandwich bag. Go ahead and shove that up into the middle. And then we will go from there to create a scented pumpkin. Okay, I'm going to take three essential oils and put three drops each for, if I want a little bit more aroma of each of these, into a half bag of rice. And when I get the three drops in there, I'm going to close up the bag and I'm going to shake it around and make sure that the scents get um, really thoroughly put through the rice. Okay, let's go ahead and... Um, get your oils and that's anywhere from three to four drops each 
in there of cinnamon, allspice, or clove. You can do one scent, you can do all, or if you have a synthetic scent that you like the smell of, you can put several drops in there until you get it to the amount of aroma you want. Okay, once your oils are all worked into the rice, you want to take your knee high and you want to wrap it around a cup so that you can easily pour the rice into it with very little storage. Okay. And then you can release all that more. Okay, now what you want to do is try not to do that. Okay. That's your goal. Okay. And now that you have your rice in the tube and you can try to get all those extra bits of rice and put them in there and you should see that it has a nice sack to it and you can sweep up those extra bits of rice and then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to try to tie off our rice sack and um, you can see how well it fits in here. You can put that in here. video get that much done okay so we're going to start with a stem and then work into the leaf so that all you have to do is actually sew it onto the pumpkin at the connection of the colors all right so we're kind of actually simplifying how much sewing you're going to have to do so what you want to do is you want to we're going to do a little bit of an eye cord first you will have some increasing that happens so we're going to draw a string cast on four stitches and we're just going to knit back and forth for approximately three inches of an eye cord okay so go ahead and pause the video and knit back and forth for three to four inches you want it to kind of start doing its own little curly thing all right okay as you can see we have an eye cord of three inches for the stem which you can go in and wrap it to where it curls when you go to attach it okay and I'll show you how that done all right so I've already done a short end and I'm going to attach a new color all right and I like to do the magic knot or fisherman's knot or square knot however you know it to be so I do a half knot with the new color around the old color and then I push it as far down and pull to the base all right and then I pull on the original color. Yes, it's going to tighten the stitches, but you're going to see what I'm fixing to do. All right, so you're going to do a half knot where you wrap it around and send it through. Then you're going to go all the way down to the base and tighten. Okay? And then you're going to pull, and what that's going to do is loosen up the stitches, and then you don't notice the connection. Apologize for the noise. It's a little bit of a ruckus when you live with a house of six. So, what you're going to do now, and I've cut it to the very base so that you do not see that connection. All right, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start increasing. So, I'm going to wrap that new color around the next empty peg and I'm going to knit over. Okay. All right, then I'm going to wrap the next empty peg, and then I'm going to knit over. Now we're going to be switching from, we're going to be moving and changing up here in a little bit on how we're doing things, because we're going to continue the kind of cabling 
into the leaf. Okay, so we're going to increase again. We're going to wrap and turn that next empty peg. And then we're going to knit our way over. Okay, and then we're going to be starting to create a cable here very shortly. Okay, I'll show you how that's done. All right. Now we're going to wrap and turn again. Okay, now here's where you want to start your system. You're going to wrap and turn, you're going to knit your way over. All right. And we should have increased on two on each side, but we're going to do a couple of more increases. All right. Now. We're going to start doing a purl section in here, okay? Alright, so we're going to do a little bit of a garter stitch along with some cabling, okay? So, we've already increased by two on each side. So what we want to do is you want to wrap and turn. Because what we want to do is we want to have an increase of four on each side of the original four we started on. So we have one more increase to do. What we're going to do now is we're going to purl two. Okay, and then we're going to e-wrap four. One, two, three, four. Then we're going to purl two and then increase. Purl. Two and then increase. All right. Now do remember you're going to continue to e wrap those four because you're going to be cabling with them. So you're going to increase, then you're going to knit the two. Now, if you need to, go ahead and stitch marker those four so you know that you're going to be e wrapping them from now on, okay? Because on the next row back, we're going to be cabling, okay? Okay, I've added that stitch marker there. All right, now what I want to do is I've knitted over two, and then I'm going to e wrap those four stitches. We're going to be cabling on our way back, okay? And we're going to continue so that we have cabling in the leaf and cabling in the um, pumpkin that kind of collaborates, okay? Then you're going to knit over three and you're going to do your last increase, okay? And then you're going to purl three and then you're going to do a cable like we've been doing, okay? And the leaf is pretty much going to have to show you from beginning to end on this because there's a lot of movement going on around it, okay? Alright, so we're here at the cable. Skip the first two pegs. You wrap pegs three and four. Toss the loops over. Okay. Okay. Then you're going to place stitch four going from the bottom of the stitch and then stitch three going from the bottom of the stitch again. You're going to take them off and put them into the middle of the loom while making sure the working yarn goes in front and wrap pegs one and two. So you can't have the working yarn going behind the stitch holder that you've got there. All right, so then you're going to toss over pegs one and two and then you're going to move stitch two to peg four and stitch one to peg three. You're going to pick up your stitch marker making sure that the working yarn stays in front. You're going to pick up stitch three and place it on peg one and stitch four onto peg two. Even odds always together then tighten up your stitch so that you're not having to put any stress on it all right makes it super easy all righty 
Let's see if we can't get the stitcher. There we go. All right, now, then we're going to purl three and then do one more increase, okay? So here's one, two, and three. And what this will do is it will keep the leaf from curling on you because you ain't going to want it to curl. All right, so increase one more time. And then you're going to knit three, okay? Two, and three. And you're gonna e-wrap four, one, two, three, and four. Then you're going to knit four. Okay. Now, because of the kind of increasing and stuff, you're not going to get a real uniform edging. So basically what I'm going to do is start with the peg I finished with over here, and I'm going to purl four and e-wrap four and purl four. Okay. Okay. So there's our purl four. And then we're going to e wrap four. This will be row two, okay, for our. We're going to cable a little faster than normal, okay. So this is row two. Just want to make sure we're cabling in the same direction every time. It just makes it so much easier. All right, three and four. All right, and we're going to start with the peg we finished with, and we're going to knit. Okay. So, one, two, and this is row three, okay, and then we're going to e-wrap one, two, three, four. Now, if you recall, we were always doing the cable on the fifth row, and we can't do that or it puts us backwards, okay? So we're going to do it on the fourth row. So we're going to do the cabling again. Okay. All right. So we're going to do the cabling again. And then we should be able to start decreasing. All right. We're going to keep continuing to keep up with when we cable. All right. So you're going to purl four. All right, you're going to skip pegs one and two. You wrap pegs three and four. Toss over. On a stitch holder. Going up under the stitch. Oh no. Okay, stitch four, then stitch three. Then you're going to cross in front of the stitch holder and wrap pegs one and two. All right, then you're going to place stitch two on peg four. So place stitch two on peg four and stitch one on peg three. And then you're going to make sure your working yarn is staying forward and not crossing behind. And then you're going to place stitch three on peg one and stitch four on peg two. Okay. And then you're going to go in and you're going to tighten those stitches up so they have a nice uniform look about them when the project is done. All right. And then you're going to purl four. Okay. And then what we'll be ready to do is start decreasing the leaf. Okay. All right, 
So we're going to purl one more. Okay. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to knit our way over and then when we get to the last stitch here we're going to decrease. So we're going to decrease this slowly as we increased. Okay. So you're going to knit four. Remember this is row one on our cabling. You might need to take notes if you're one who has a hard time remembering, okay? When we start getting to this section. And then you're going to e-wrap four. All right, then we're going to knit two. Then we're going to decrease that end stitch and then knit the two together, okay? You're going to move that stitch over. Move that stitch over. And then you're going to knit the two together, okay? And this time you're going to purl three. Remember this is row two. Okay. So you're going to purl three. So one, two, three. You wrap two, one. And two, and two more, three, and four, okay. Then you're going to purl two, decrease that end, and then purl the two together, okay? So uh, purl two, okay, and then you're going to decrease the end over one, and then you're going to purl the two together. Okay, then you're going to knit your way over, and remember this is row three, and that you'll be cabling the next row. So you're going to knit three, e wrap four. Okay, so there's one, two, three, four. Then you're going to knit one, decrease that outer end, and knit the two together. Remember, we will be cabling the four e-wrap stitches this time because it'll be row four. So you're going to knit that over. All right. And then you're going to purl two, one two, and then you're going to do your cabling, so you're going to skip the first two stitches, and you're going to e wrap page three and four, get your stitch holder, place stitch four, then stitch three onto the stitch holder, e wrap pegs one and two, making sure that the working yarn goes in front of your stitch holder, then you're going to move Stitch two to peg four and stitch one to peg three. Keeping the working yarn in front here. Then you're going to place stitch three on peg one. Okay. I don't know how they look like they got connected. Okay. So stitch three on peg one, it'll stay, okay, and then stitch four onto peg two, go in and tighten. Okay, and then you're going to purl one, decrease on the end by one, 
and purl the two together, okay? Okay, you can see how that's looking. You can see how that's looking on the opposite side. It's actually really nice with the cabling, okay? All right, so now what you want to do is you want to knit your way over, and we're almost done. And remember, this is row one. We're, we're keeping up with our cable while we're decreasing, okay? I know that's a challenge unto itself, but it really adds a nice extra touch to the leaf. All right, and you wrap your four stitches and then you're going to decrease and knit the two together okay so you're going to decrease knit the two together okay make sure that whole stitch okay now then we're going to purl one E wrap, which means this is our second row, okay? So you're going to E wrap four. Then we're going to decrease and purl the two together, okay? Which is row two. And then we're going to purl the two together. Okay. Then we're going to knit one, ear up three. So we're going to ear up one, two, three. Then we're going to decrease one and E wrap the two together. Okay. Now we know we're supposed to cable this row and we have one that's supposed to decrease over here. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to decrease. We're going to go ahead and decrease it. And we're going to work it as a cable. All right. So you're going to go ahead and you're going to decrease. Then you're going to skip that stitch there. And you're going to E wrap pegs three and knit the one over and then you're going to e wrap peg four and you're going to knit two together all right here's your knit two together and somewhere in there is a connector there it is didn't get tossed over okay We're going to take and put stitches four and three. Then we're going to wrap pegs one and two. Place stitch two on peg four, stitch one on peg three. Then you're going to place stitch three onto peg one and stitch four onto peg two. Snug up those stitches. You're down to your original four stitches again. You're going to do three rows and then you're going to draw string off. Okay? So, you're going to now knit row one row two and row three and then you're going to draw string off all right and Okay, cut your tail, draw string off, and this will complete your leaf. Okay, and then we will be ready to attach it. Alright, 
So I'm going to go to the opposite side, and I'm going to toss that bottom lid over, and I'm going to pull that through. Toss the bottom lid over, pull it through, toss the bottom loop over, pull through, and toss the last loop over, and pull through. Are you ready to see your beautiful leaf? Pull. Look at that. And it has the beautiful cabling on it. See? Alright. So, we want to bring over our nice pumpkin. And we'll connect it. And if what you want to do is really curl it, you can connect it that way. Okay. But you can curl it and attach it that way. All right. Either way, it's up to you how you want to attach it. But this way, you want to, you can either sew this down and then kind of attach that. And then um, that way, you can do it that way. Okay, so I'm going to show you how I intend on doing this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my needle that I have on the stem color that I cut me a separate piece of. And I'm going to send it through the top of the pumpkin, okay? And then I'm going to send it through my slip stitch I have here, all right? And then I'm going to tighten it. All right. So what I'm going to do now is send through the center, okay, I'm going to send it through the center, and I'm going to send it back through, all right, send it through the pumpkin again, so that it's more connected in the middle, send it back up, if you're trying to keep a connection here, and then we're going to send it back through the pumpkin again, okay? And then you're going to want to try to tie it off, all right? Which I'm going to send it back through here, and, and I'm going to tie it off, and then I'm going to send that through, okay? I'm going to take a crochet hook and send it through. Now, I want to do some attaching. I don't feel the need to sew the leaf on. I just want to attach. Now, what I would like to do is get a nice curve set in place on my pumpkin stem, and I'm going to send it through like that, okay? You can place it any way you want. If you want it to be more here, or you want to try and get it more onto the other side, you can. But your goal is to send it through the pumpkin and tie it down okay and here's where a crochet hook does really nicely so i'm going to send it through and then i'm going to pull through like that all right that curls it and then when i'm done with that then i go through and i pull through like that or get it up in the middle of the pumpkin, okay? So that you don't see it anymore. Okay. And then I'm inclined to do the same thing here, so that you don't see it anymore over here. Just send it through the middle. It usually doesn't give me this much trouble, but I'm filming, so I figure that's probably what it is. If I wasn't filming, it'd probably be fine. Okay. I'm just going to submit that. 
All right. Now, what we want to do now, it's up to you if you can get it a little bit more where you want, or you can bring it around here, and you can attach it. Okay. Whatever you want to think you want to attach that tip, but I don't really want to connect it because it gives it a chance to move around, do its thing, that kind of thing, give it more of a three-dimensional look, okay? So I don't really want to tack it down too hard. But I will think that I will bring it over here and tack it down. Okay. So I'm going to pull through and then pull through. Okay. Then I'm going to stick up under here and pull it through this way. There we go. And then I'm going to cut it. All right. There. So you can press it back down and there is your pumpkin. How you do a scented cabled pumpkin. There it is. You're done.